What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast. Today's episode, it happened. It finally, finally happened in Chicago. There is going to be a new head coach. There's going to be a new general manager. Hopefully there's new other people, but there's for sure going to be a new head football coach and a new GM for the Chicago Bears heading into the 2022-2023 season. It finally happened. We're going to talk about all of that. Who should replace the GM? Who should be the new head coach? Should more be done in the Chicago Bears to help get the organization back on track, if it ever was on track? We're going to discuss all of that today. But first, make sure you hit the subscribe button to the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And please hit the like button. Please hit that like button. It helps out the video and the algorithm and everything else. Please and thank you. You can find the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Um, wherever you're listening, please follow it, rate it, uh, review it if you have time. If not, just a rate would be great. You can do it even on Spotify now. That's a new thing. I know you could always do it on Apple. I think you can do it on iHeartRadio and all that, so go do that for me. It would be greatly appreciated. Again, it helps out the algorithm that I don't understand. The podcast is also brought to you by the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. If you head to bellyupsports.com, check out all the blogs, um, podcasts. It's going to probably turn into the Belly Up Media, Sports Media Network, because they got stuff out there for more than just sports. It'll, something for everybody to go check out. I think there's over 70 podcasts, so many writers. So go check out bellyupsports.com and check out everything there. The podcast is also brought to you by Coach Stone and his Back to the Basics uh, football drills books. Uh, he also hosts uh, youth camps, different camps all over the country and even overseas. You know, uh, so go check out all that. If you go to CoachStoneFootball.com, check out all of his books from offense to defense to game planning to practice planning, uh, offense, you know, just everything you can think of. Um, his very first book is over 500 pages, and then he's got a whole series. There's tons of them. So, again, CoachStoneFootball.com, check out all that. If you go there, you will never have to look up another drill again. I promise you. Thank you, Coach Stone, for sponsoring the podcast. Greatly appreciate it. You can also check out the free magazines that me, Coach Bancher, Coach Sheffer, uh, and a bunch of other written on free info for you guys. It's also, you can find that on CoachStoneFootball.com. All right. It finally happened. Us Bears fans have talked and talked and complained and fought. We have thought and said, you know, it's time for Matt Nagy to go. And I've said multiple times on here, I do not want to call for somebody's job. I absolutely hate that because if somebody calls for my job, it would be horrific. Uh, you know, that's a horrible thing. And mentally, it'd be tough to deal with. And then if it actually happened because people were calling for it, it would be awful. But this is all I'm not in the NFL. I am not the head football coach of one of the biggest franchises, one of the oldest franchises in one of the biggest cities, top three cities in the United States. So this is comes to territory. I'm not making millions of dollars. It finally happened. It finally happened. We we talked about it and talked about it and post about it. About a year or more that Matt Nagy probably needed to go. The Matt Nagy era needed to be done in Chicago. Plenty of us fans were done with it. Um, you know, we've had, you know, when he was hired, when Matt Nagy was hired, you know, he coached a year as an offensive coordinator. I mean, I can't remember how many years he coached under Andy Reid, but I know he's an offensive coordinator for a year under Andy Reid. And then, you know, a, an offensive genius, especially when he uh, was reborn in his career, I think, at Kansas, you know, over in Kansas City for the Chiefs. He was an offensive guru with the Eagles, but that kind of, as they, it went on, I think he forced a lot of things, you know, so when he was let go, he got to, like, reinvent himself at Kansas City. So Matt Nagy learning under him, that's why the Bears hired him. And then before that, they hire, you know, Ryan Pace, who at the beginning looked okay. And then as the years have gone on, you have to take responsibility. So you go through, you know, Coach Fox. Uh, you have to deal with the – they draft Mitch Trubisky, and people really complain about Mitch Trubisky. He started a year at North Carolina. Did okay. Didn't have this fantastic year, but they traded up to get him. And it was – for Ryan Pace, it was moves like that. It was moves with it's like we don't have a draft pick this year because we had to dra get up Justin Fields, where we thought that you know the offensive line really struggled. Now I know you need a good quarterback, but you know you have Nick Foles who can play. 
Uh, Andy Dalton can play when they're healthy, but they wanted to look towards the future and get Justin Fields. So for Ryan Pace, anyway, that's kind of what led to that. But with Matt Nagy, you come in as this offensive guru, and it started off good. Like I said, what kind of led to his demise was that 2018 season, his very first year. Now, you know, he did have some good times. You know, we had some good times in Chicago, and there was just a ton of bad times. And again, for people that don't understand because they're not Bears fans, and they even talk about it on TV, there are pieces in Chicago. I'm not talking maybe a Super Bowl if they come put together, but there have been athletes. And what I mean by that is if you look at the defenses, the defenses have been pretty good. Defenses are always, you know, top 10, if not more. They're Super Bowl caliber defenses. But that's just the Bears. They have to have an offense that's capable of combating that. And in 2018, he was the NFL coach of the year. They go 12 and four. I think it was 12 and four. And, you know, they win the NFC North. They beat the Green Bay Packers. They win the NFC North. They get to the title game. And then the Doink Captain versus Nick Foles and the Eagles. You know, it's some, you know, he had a good 2018 season and ended with that. And all of a sudden, once that Doink happened, it was, my God, like it just became this curse. And, uh, you know, Mitch Trubisky did just enough during that year to help with the offense. You know, they weren't setting the world on fire, but they did just enough. The defense held them in games. You know, he was doing exactly what he needed to do. And then building up into the next year, you saw them getting like Jimmy Graham and they got Cole Komet later on. And they were building these tight ends. And Matt Nagy was boasting about, you know, this is what we're going to do because this is what Mitch Trubisky can do. You know, we have to be able to run the ball. So we need these tight ends. We got, we're getting David, they got Dave Montgomery later on. They got, you know, Cohen, and they said, okay, we're going to be able to run the ball. You got to pass the ball with short passes, play action, RPO, power run game. Well, you got to fix offensive line. So he boasts about this on the offense, and then it just started to unravel. You know, we, you know, don't do well that next year, and then, you know, make the playoffs the next year on a wild card, which we shouldn't have in the COVID times. And then it just, it just went on and on. And, you know, it, that's kind of what led to his demise. And we've talked about it. Um, you know, Nagy finished his career with 34 all overall, like a regular season. Um, I believe his regular season is 34 and 31. And then if you look at the playoffs, 34 and 33. Yeah. And that because he went 0 and 2 in the playoffs, we went 12 and 4 in 2018. And then um, he had, like I said, and then we went on after that year, he was 22 of 27 in the last three seasons. Um, so it just, it just, yeah, it just did not end well for him. It was not going well for being an offensive guru. Now, where the blame started to shift and everything was, well, it's Mitch Trubisky's fault. And I was one of those people you're looking at and you go, man, you know, I know we're struggling on offensive line. The offensive line takes you where you need to go. But at the same time, Mitch Trubisky just didn't look like he was playing well. But then going into the COVID year, you know, they're bringing in Nick Foles. And then that's kind of where it all was complete. And then, like, as a head coach, say, okay, I'm going to call plays. Well, then halfway through the year, well, you're going to call plays now. Well, I'm going to call plays right back. I've seen that before with Coach Gus Mazan at Auburn. It does not work well. So Matt Nagy wants to call offense. He wants to be in charge. He wants to do that. Well, you're the head coach, yes, but you need to be the CEO, especially in the NFL. Look at successful NFL head coaches. I mean, they have really, like, Bill Belichick has really big input with defense, but he don't, I don't think he really calls it. He has a big input. Nick, Sab- Nick Saban at Alabama has a big input. So he just wanted to be really involved in calling plays. He wanted to be in charge of it. Um, and so flipping it back and forth is his demise. And then when you watch Mitch Trubisky play later on, when they benched him for Nick Foles, and then the play calling got handed over to Coach Lazor, Lazar, yeah, it did a lot better. And then you could tell Matt Nagy started to take it over and it started doing bad. So you start seeing Nick Foles struggling. You go, well, wait a minute. And then Mitch Trubisky comes in and says, wait a minute. Okay, now we're starting to see it. And then you saw it with Andy Dalton, okay? And then you saw it with Justin Fields, even though he's a rookie. Okay, but you're seeing similar things because people don't want to believe me. Justin Fields is a faster version of Mitch Trubisky. Maybe with a little stronger arm, but they're similar. Mitch Trubisky can move. You have to do RPO stuff. You have to play action. You have to have his own power run thing. Well, so does Justin Fields. That's what they ran at Ohio State. So you have to do the same thing. And Nagy's like, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Well, then he turns the play calling over. 
And it just it just kept going on and on. And you know, Zach Kalman, who's been on the podcast before, said you know there was pitchforks and everything and around the for the Chicago. So they draft Justin Fields to get everybody to back off from firing because people wanted him fired last year at the end of his third year. You know, going into his fourth year, we wanted him gone. And you know. The team now the team said they liked him. He says it was a nice guy. People always say he was a nice guy, and I'm sure he is. But at the same time, going doing what you did in 2018 was fantastic. But then all of a sudden, you have to have some type of stability. I'm not saying you have to go 12 and four every single year, but you go 12 and four, you beat the Packers. Now the bar, you know, whatever the bar was set, now it's moved up 10 notches. I, I'm so happy we won that year. You know, it was a good time to be a fan, and then it's been a struggle. Um, you know, offense never ranked higher than 21st in yards per game under him. Had losing streaks of four plus games in 2019. He had four, 2020 had six, and then this year had five. You know, that's not consistent. You go 12 and four. So we expect the next year either go. I said this before you, if you go 12 and four, we as fans and what the pieces you have, we expect to go 10 and six to 13 and three. There's somewhere in there where you have to go. Okay, nine and seven probably would be okay, but you're you know, would you make the playoffs? But yeah, so that kind of range you have to have. Now going eight and eight missing the playoffs. Eight and eight. Well, then we get to the wild card, which they added an extra team for the playoffs that year. So should we have really been there? Oh wow, he played the Nickelodeon thing or whatever. Great, who cares? You know, and then this year you go only won six games. You know, go six and eleven. You're going backwards. You're going backwards. Now, sometimes maybe you should give them a longer time, but we've got to see movement. So if you're, you know, scoring points like you're supposed to, the defense is doing what they're supposed to do, and we're seeing some progress, yeah, then you keep your job. But then you make the flipping of the offensive play caller back and forth, um, the way you handle Mitch Trubisky, uh, the way last year, I believe, he calls out the defense to do their job. But wait a minute, like the offense isn't doing their job. That's your job. So that's the downfall for you. Uh, but then the bigger picture of fans is, well, wait a minute, who selected this coach? Who is helping make these decisions of personnel and everything to trade for Justin Fields and not get an offensive lineman to have a doctor who misread um, Tevin Jenkins for his back and have to get surgery. Well, it's Ryan Pace. Ryan Pace is just as responsible for a team like this as Matt Nagy. You hired Matt Nagy. You're making these personnel decisions, and it's just year after year and hard to watch. So we knew as fans, okay, Ryan Pace has to go. So Ryan Pace making these decisions, if he would have got rid of Matt Nagy last year and we hired somebody else and we had a good season with his job, if we drafted better. Now, people love the Justin Fields thing, whatever. They thought that was going to save his job. It's just enough. Now, I might catch some heat for this. If they fired Nagy and kept Ryan Pace, I'm not saying that's the best decision at all. But I think it'd be okay because at the end of the day, we're watching the product on the field. If he would have made the decision saying, I'm going to get rid of Matt Nagy, we're going to make better personnel decisions or whatever. Okay. Okay. But he also had to – he had to go. Like it, these personnel decisions, you know, you hope you make decisions for years to come to where it turns into something. It kind of looked that way in 2018, and then it just plopped. Like I said, if it was consistent, you know, okay, we're going 10 and 6, we're going 11 and 5 or whatever, and we're competing, you know, we're making wild cards. We're getting second in the North. Maybe we're winning the North once in a while. We're not letting Aaron Rodgers own us. Then it's okay. This is what the writing on the wall is. Uh it's more – you see more coaches get fired than GMs, but you do see GMs get fired when they don't do their job. I also think a part of the Ryan Pacing was us, like all of us people posting about – I'm not saying that's why, but I have a feeling that, you know, the McCaskies and then probably got a little pressure and said, you know, maybe we, we, we should. You know, the fan – you know, not talking about – cancel culture or anything. I can't say that too loud. You two will get mad. And, you know, you can't – I don't know if that's what caused it. I kind of hope it did. I kind of hope they looked at it from a de- decision making of we need something else. We need better decision making. We need this. We need that. You know, whatever. And the, but then you got to go further and Ted Phillips, but he keeps his job, uh, the president. But I, that's another one. Like you get now, the very top is the McCaskies. They're not going anywhere unless they sell the team, which they're not. They're making tons of money, tons of money. So that one we just have to we have to live with, you know. We just the hand we're dealt; that's never going to go away. But you could get rid of Ted Phillips and bring in a new 
president and then start to clean house and really start and, and make decisions. But the, this is, I think, is a good step. You know, we're not going to have a perfect world. Um, we're not going to have our cake and eat it too. I don't know the right phrase. But we're not going to have both. So this is the right thing. Now, the question is, are they going to screw it up? And what I mean by that is, there's reports left and right of everybody they're interviewing. They're interviewing tons of people for this GM job. It's reported they're requesting permission to interview a ton of people for the head coaching job. And that's what we want to see. We want to see them going after certain people. But there's also some people, why are you wasting your time? Uh, like Leslie Frazier, you know, he was coaching for the Bills. He was uh, head coach of I believe, at the Vikings before. You need somebody that's established. You need somebody that's up and coming, that has shown promise. Not saying he's not a good coach. He's in the NFL, obviously. But you need to make a splash, um, whether it's an established coach or, this, you know, something. we got to make a splash. But where I don't want to make a mistake is it, they might hire a head coach before they hire a GM, which is something you don't want to do because we saw this when with Mitch Trubisky and Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy didn't draft Mitch Trubisky, so he kind of didn't want him. But as a coach, it's your job to develop him, so I don't want to hear excuses. I kind of think you should hire a GM first. You got to get the GM thing figured out. Um, and then you go about it and you tell the GM, okay, here's the head coach you guys we've talked to. You talk to them. Who do you think? Because it's kind of like an athletic director thing where if like a Miami, which is why I didn't understand this when you're Miami and you hire Mario Cristobal, which is a great hire, but then, then you hire the athletic director. That doesn't make sense. And I've seen it at the U of I where, you know, they extend a coach Cumbit's, uh, Cubit's, uh, contract. And then I can't remember if they did that without, without an athletic director or before Coach or Josh Whitman got there. Josh Whitman gets there the day of, fires and brings in Lovey Smith because he wants his guy. So, you know, you got to look at the GM sort of like an athletic director. I think you got to bring a GM first. You can interview the coaches, obviously, and have your pick. You have to hire the, the coach first. Not saying it's going to lead to bad things because most likely, hopefully, you don't screw it up. But if you don't hire the GM first, this is what's, you know, it could lead to bad things. Now, Tons of people have been talked about for the GM job. I'm not an expert because I don't know everybody that's done the, doing anything. Um, Joe Schoen for the Buffalo Bills, an assistant general manager. They've they've talked to, I believe, or it's been on there. Um, Ron Carthen, San Francisco 49er director of personnel. Um, Ed Hodge, Indianapolis Colts vice president. Um, Rick Smith, former Texas vice president. You need to stay away from that. Um uh, Morocco Brown, Indianapolis College Director of College Scouting, I guess have been talked to. Um, Glenn Cook, uh, Cleveland Browns Vice President of Personnel. That wouldn't be bad. They've, they've got some good guys there. Jeff Ireland, New Orleans Saints General Man Assistant General Manager and College Scouting Director, which would be interesting to bring him and then see you can't get Sean Payton over. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's a bunch of other names on here. Um, Reggie McKenzie, former Oakland uh, Las Vegas Raiders GM and Senior Scouting. Omar Khan, they've requested today, Pittsburgh Steeler, Vice President of Football Operations. That might be a good hire the way to bring that Pittsburgh way of thinking and building. That would be a great one. Uh, Will McClay, Dallas Cowboys, Vice President of Personnel. That's another good one. Joe Hortis, Baltimore Ravens Director of Personnel. Mike Potts, Cincinnati Bengals Scouting Director. So, I mean, general managers, if you stick to these names, you can't go wrong. I think Riddick, Lewis Riddick, you know, he's on ESPN. He said he's intrigued by the Chicago Bears thing. I think that'd be great. I think he understands players. He understands the game. And I think he would be able to relate to the coach and relate to the players from his time with the NFL before he worked with the Eagles, I believe, and his time away working at ESPN to kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, absorb. That's another good one. Like I said, I'm not an expert at the general manager stuff unless you look at, okay, they've worked in this front office. This is what the organization's done. So that's why you're thinking, okay, a Pittsburgh Steeler. They keep head coaches. They keep the success. He's seen it. Could he bring that model over to the Bears? Now, if you're the McCaskies, whoever you hire as a general manager, you've got to let them do their work. If you bring somebody like the Pittsburgh Steelers from the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think in New Orleans Saints because they've they've done it. And again, maybe you can bring Sean Payton over. I think Sean Payton would be a great hire for the Bears if you can get him to come up there. Um, the Colts even because they've been around and seen how that's done. So there's different organizations of people that you can interview from, and I think they'd be great because they can bring that. <clears throat> excuse me, model to the Bears as long as Ted Phillips doesn't screw it up and doesn't let them do their thing and the McCaskies don't screw it up and let them do their thing. And then the reason why you're seeing a lot of people with the personnel and everything, because that's one of the big problems with the Bears is personnel. We struggle with our offensive line. Quarterback play has been a struggle. 
you know, we sometimes we don't have the wide receivers. We got the running backs. We kind of have the wide receivers, but it's just been inconsistent. You know, all that stuff. So that's why I think you're seeing a lot of people them interview a lot of people because of this. Now, who is going to take over? So many names, so many names. Um, like I said, some of this may not be correct anymore. The Bears have left or right every day. I'm getting like five notifications. It seems like that they're asking to interview people. You know, like the Bears put in a request to interview Packers offensive coordinator Nathan H- Nathel Hackett for their head coaching job. Um, he uh, has already scheduled an interview this week with the Jaguars and Broncos. He's a hot candidate. Um, Aaron Rodgers speaks highly of him. He's been working with Matt LaFleur in that offense. Now, when you have Aaron Rodgers, you could probably run anything. But, you know, um, he's an up-and-coming up offensive guy. This would not be a bad one. But, again, he's not an established head coach. But he could. But So that's why they're going to have to be careful because we're looking at Nagy going, well, it's this offensive guru. Well, you're looking at this guy. Is he going to bring in an offense? So got to be careful. But it's not bad to interview him to see what kind of offense he's going to bring. That's been the problem to try to fix that. Um, the Bears have put in a request to interview uh, Dan Quinn for their head coaching job. Now, this one I don't know because we saw how it ended. He's been a great defensive coordinator. Um, he's a successful defensive in Seattle and when he was with um, Atlanta. Now, after the Super Bowl to the Patriots, that team had just tanked. Um, so I don't know if this would be the best hire. I know they might be looking at a defensive guy again instead of an offensive guy. They kind of go back and forth. You realize that, you know, we hire an offensive guy to a defensive guy, back to an offensive guy. Like, you know, so not saying this won't be a bad thing. He, I like our defensive coordinator. I like the way the defense played. So maybe they do need it, whoever it is. But this one, not a bad one, but I think there's other ones out there. But it's, it doesn't hurt to talk to him. Great defensive mind to help out that defense. But I think we kind of, we kind of need to, uh, figure out the uh, offense a little bit. Um, Brian uh, Dabble, I'm going to say his name wrong, offense coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. Chicago requests permission to interview Bills offense coordinator Brian Dole for the Bears head coaching job. This one, um, he, a great hire. You know, he's worked for the New England Patriots. He's offense coordinator for Alabama and Nick Saban. He's done a good job with the Buffalo Bills. Um, I don't know if he has any head NFL coaching experience. Um, but this is another one they're they're looking to get, and it would not be a bad hire. He is on a short list in some reports for some Bears. Um, I think it'd be good because of the way he coaches uh, Allen over there at the Buffalo Bills. The way he throw the ball, he could also run. Um, you know, it's writing here that he'd be a great parent for Justin Fields. Fields is more of a um, he knows how to use his legs. And so I think he'd be able to do that. And of course, they've requested to uh, the pair. This is what the Bears did too. The Bears have requested permission to interview both Bucks coordinators, offensive coordinator Brian Leftwich and defense coordinator Todd Bowles. Only a Bears thing to do to look at a team and say, I want to interview both of you. Now, I've said this about Brian Leftwich before. You know, he's coached with Bruce Arians at Arizona, and then he's doing it now. And he's offensive coordinator. They're doing great things. He is running Bruce Arians' offense, but I'm sure he's put some tweaks on him. The only thing about this is he has Tom Brady at quarterback. He has all those weapons on offense. Not saying he can't come in and change. I'm not saying that. This would just have to be an extensive interview, and you have to really look at it and say, well, are you only doing well because you have Tom Brady? Can't, But since he's a former quarterback, is that why Tom Brady is still continuing to play or helping him play to that level? So could Brian Leftwich, who played quarterback in the NFL, coach under a great – quarterback coach and Bruce Arians for years, you know, he coached Peyton Manning. He coached Ben Roethlisberger. Could this guy come in and help Justin Fields and whoever quarterbacks there? So this could be a, a fantastic hire. And this is a very popular one that people are pushing for. Um, Todd Bowles, not as high popular. And that's not a name I was thinking of. They were going to try to do. Um, but again, they're just looking at teams that are having success and say, oh, we learned under Bruce Arians. Look at what they do, and they like it. So this again wouldn't be a bad hire. I think if Brian Leftwich wants the job, you'd want him before Todd Bowles. But again, either one would be great. But Brian Leftwich could come in and be a quarterback whisperer to to whoever, to whoever um, is the quarterback. Another one: the Bears have requested permission to speak with any Adams Colts vice president of personnel. 
uh, Ed Dahl is a defensive coordinator, so they're trying to get the vice president of player personnel and Matt Elberfluss. I've said his name wrong uh, for def- the defensive coordinator on this one. Eh, not going to spend too much time. Uh, not an established head coach. Uh, you know, the culture out of the playoffs. You know, they did good on defense. Defense had kept them in the game. But I don't see enough there over the years to prove, like, okay, you're going to come into the Bears and just because of your time and change it. This one I didn't see coming either. They've requested permission to interview Bill's defensive coordinator, Leslie Frazier. Um, this has been not, not a popular one. If you look at some reports and some of the fans, this is not a popular one because the Bills def- if you're going to hire a defensive guy, you might as well do Todd Bowles or someone else. Um, he did not have a great assistant at a being a head coach. Um, and not saying where he's gone, where his defenses are just this swarming thing. And again, you need to make a splash. So um, a lot of the other names we've talked about would be splash hires. This would not bring the attention of a lot of people. And I don't, you know, you could, you know, you'd probably rather get Dan Quinn if you're going to do a defensive guy. Um, I would rather see him uh, over that. And then another one where I've kind of been on board with is they've planned to interview Doug Peterson, who is, has not been coaching for a couple years. Um, you know, he was the head coach of the Eagles, won a Super Bowl. The reason why I think – this one you sh- they should take a look at is because he's won a Super Bowl and the type of offense he was running with the Eagles and really wanting to run at the Eagles was the play action stuff, the RPOs and moving the pocket with Carson Wentz and getting Carson Wentz certain decent numbers. I don't think Carson Wentz is a good quarterback or that great of a quarterback, but to get those type of numbers with him, he goes down, able to do similar things with Nick Foles. Now, I know it didn't end well. I'm sure they butted heads, um, him and Brian, or uh, Carson Wentz, which kind of led to his demise, but he's been a head coach, Super Bowl winning head coach. Type of offense was, so he's taking his time to step away and realize how it ended and how to fix it. Um you know, he kind of worked with Hertz a little bit. So I think he would understand with Carson or uh, Justin Fields how to call a game for him. Understand the offensive line is huge. The offensive line had to play well that year. So just understand and take a, st- take a step away and whatever mistakes he made as a head coach, if any, you know, he probably did it and to fix them. So this one, I don't, I'm not saying they need to hire, but I think they need to look at just the type of offense they want to do. Well, then in the news, Miami Dolphins fired Brian Flores, which nobody saw coming. I did not agree with this because it was year two. I think he was above 500 a little bit in his record. The Dolphins started out bad, and then they finished strong, had to overcome some injuries. This is one that people really want all of a sudden. Um, you know, the Bears – um, former Dolphins coach Brian Flores is set to interview for the Bears head coaching job. Um, he's the Chicago is the first um, confirmed interview for him. Um, you know, he's coming off two winning seasons with the Dolphins. They just didn't get to the playoff both times, so he's trying to build that organization back up. He comes from the Bill Belichick coaching tree. Um, he was trying to build that up in Miami. Uh, so this one, his name is up pretty high for the Bears. I think this would be a splash higher. I think you bring in that strong mentality of him. And I, assistants don't do well when they leave Bill Belichick. So that's the only downfall here. Is it going to happen? But it looked like it was happening in Miami. So this would be higher, and you couldn't go wrong. He would come in, and the Bears would immediately have a tougher offense. They would have a really tough defense. And he would try to build the organization up to say we want to win, and he'd have that mentality. They all do, but some have it more than others. I think this is another – this would be a big splash hire for them to get. Um, and then another name that's been brought up I don't think they've talked to was Jim Harbaugh, I think would also be a great hire. Coached in the Super Bowl, played in the NFL, played for the Bears. He understands the organization and understand the, um, what he – had a winning record in the NFL – the turnaround that he's figured out at Michigan, I think he could come up, uh, play quarterback in the NFL. He would understand to help Justin Fields. Pop, I mean, more popular than you think. Some people are like, eh, I don't know, because of what they've seen at Michigan. 
it's a more popular thing than everybody. I'm mean, people are realizing people really want this. Um, Fangio has been let go of the Broncos. Now they have not interviewed him. He was a defense coordinator for the Bears. You know, the fans want that. They want him to come back in some form, whether it's the head coach or a defensive coordinator, because that's when the Bears had the Super Bowl caliber defense in 2018. That's another name that's brought up. I don't know if you want to hire him as a head coach, but I mean, it's possible, you know, bring him back. Love it. But they're looking at offense. I think they're thinking if we can get a good defensive coordinator and a head coach understands offense, because he could hire a good offensive coordinator as well. That's what the Bears are looking at. And again, you haven't seen it here, but you're seeing it in reports. If you look at every report, people are saying, get Sean Payton, get Sean Payton. Sean Payton, I think, would be the cure. How, how he had to coach through you know Katrina way back with the New Orleans Saints, how he was able to help develop Drew Brees, the type of offense they have down there. Even after he was gone, they were fighting here for a playoff spot. He's from the suburbs. He's from Naperville, the suburbs, about over an hour from the city. Was a Bears fan, you know. He went to EIU, Illinois person. I think he'd be great for the offense. I, he would get a good defensive coordinator. He understands the pride of the Bears. He understands all that, and he would help Justin Fields, I believe, especially with the offense because he's just an offensive. He, you want to talk about an offensive guru? He is one of them. I don't think he gets enough credit. You don't hear about you hear you hear about um, you hear about Bill Belichick's teams. You hear about that. You hear about Andy Reid. You hear about all that. That's an offensive guru right there. So I think he would be a big cure for the Bears. You don't see it. They haven't talked about it. I don't know how they could get him. I think he's under contract. I don't know how they would get him. I was kind of hoping they do bad and they make him leave, but that's another name that needs to be brought up. But it finally happened. It's exciting times, but also nervous times. How is, is Ted Phillips and McCassie going to screw this up? That's kind of what we're all waiting on. Are they going to screw it up? Who are they going to hire? But there's plenty of, of coaches' names out there. Plenty of splash hires that they could absolutely make. And they just, please don't screw it up. Please don't screw it up. Get a GM. Plenty of good people to pick from. There's even way better people to get for the head coaching job. And I think this head coaching job is going to speak more to people than like the Jaguars or the Giants. I think this is a better head coaching job fit for somebody. Uh, even and the Vikings are probably another one up there. Uh, that's another good one people are going to look at. But this has got to be one of the top ones for people to get. So I don't know how quickly they're going to get a head coaching. We're going to, you know, stay tuned. We're going to keep talking about it. But they need to talk to all these people, except for Leslie Frazier and and the defense coordinator for the Colts. You could scratch. Um, you can even sort of scratch off the offensive coordinator, quote unquote, for the Packers. But still talk to them. But you can make some splash hires out there. So Bears, McCaskies, are you listening? Don't screw it up. If you screw it up again, even though you're going to build a nice new place in Arlington Heights, people are going to storm Soldier Field and it's not going to be pretty. Don't screw it up. That is going to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for listening, especially anybody out there that's a Bears fan. Um, hopefully it's exciting times. Uh, check out all the affiliates in the description below. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Please, 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 please check out the weekly episodes. Go check out all the other episodes. Follow the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Be a friend, tell a friend, rate, rate it for me, please. And thank you. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, again, check out weekly episodes. Uh, thank you guys so much. This has been Coach Steve. And just like Matt Nagy, Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, we are scooting out of here.